this is what Jesus told me today. This part is the day I'm going to pray. How many remembers the dry bones? You know what deadness, when there's no water, you know what it does? We've got dry religion. We've got a form of godliness, but no power. There's deadness. There's, a, there's a addictions that have taken a generation almost. There's all this death out there, and God says that everywhere the river goes, there shall be life. We're going to see the resurrection power of God if we'll begin to speak and begin to move, and there's nothing that's going to stop it. And now I'm feeling the anointing, and I want to go back for him because I go back to what he showed me, and I don't want to, I did not want to say this unless I felt the anointing of God, and then he brought this back. But this is what God spoke to me, and he said, he said, there's people in this county there are even people that have thought of putting up with this. There's business that haven't dealt, that would not deal with us, that we deal with. There's people that have shunned us over this. And this is what God says, not just this. He said, every business that has shunned my work, I will take their business away from them, and I'm going to give to my people. Oh, and this is what he said. He said, some businesses I will literally destroy because they're not worth saving. And so I'm going to tell you something. There's a shaking and coming in Clever County like they've never seen. There's people that think they've got one foot in the promised land and the other on the banana peel and they've got everything made. And God said they don't have nothing yet. You remember the man that just said, I'll build big, bigger barns and bigger barns? God said, I'm taking it down. And so we're going to see a move of God. Now I'm going to go even farther because the Lord spoke this to me. And I'm going to share with you. They've been a form of godliness in Clever County for over 100 years. Amen. Somewhere it got lost. And, and we preach it. It's being preached and taught about a little about God, but not enough. I'm going to tell you something. God's love loves you enough not only to worship your sins away, but to change your life. God says there's an arising coming. Yes. In Claiborne County, in the surrounding county, that they will be amazed at what I'm about to do because I'm going to change lives. Yes. And I'm going to set things that have been dead back to life. And that that you have thought is gone, he said, I'm bringing back for life. Man, I feel it on him. And so I'm going to say this tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to do my declaring right now. I declare souls being saved. Yes. Come on. I declare an enemy that a territory that we've lost that we won and this is just to share one other thing that God told me to tell you tonight in church. And he knew who would be here. He said it's going to be like it was when I told Joshua. If you will proclaim it and everywhere the soles of your feet go, ever what you claim shall be yours. Yeah. He did not say might. He didn't tell, he didn't tell children of Israel that I might. He said, Joshua, everywhere I send you, you claim it and it's yours. It's not a question. And I want to I want to show you this. And when Joshua led the children of Israel into the promised land, they did not have to build cities. Only one city was destroyed, and that was Jericho. Every other city they just took over ownership. They had houses built. They had a kingdom prepared. God just said it's yours. In 1947. When Israel went, when the Jews went back to Israel, I want to, I want you to understand that for the last 50 years we've heard about how many's heard about the PLOs and the conflict. Here's here's what happened. I learned this in Israel. The PLOs are the people that was living in Israel before 1947, and when they were going to give the Israel back to the Jews, this is the Syrians, the Jordans. And, the, and uh, Lebanon, they promised these people that was in these cities, if you'll come out and let Israel in, we're going to push Israel to the sea and destroy them, and you'll have your cities back. In 1947, when Israel took over ownership of the land that God promised them, they walked into houses that was already built, towns that was already established, laying there empty, waiting on them. You know what God's saying to us right now? The what you're walking into, I've already prepared for you. Mom. Yes, Mom. It's already ready. Somebody better praise the Lord. It's already there. Glory to God. And so tonight as we begin our worship, I want you 
I'm just, I just want to set this up here. I want you, when you feel like I want you to put oil on your hands. And I want you to begin to dedicate this book to the God. This is not about me. This is not about looking good. This is not about nothing except what God's going to do. I want to dedicate this to God. I want souls to be saved. I'm going to tell you, I want people to come in here that have no hope. Yes. Come here. I want people to walk in here that their families would not even speak to. And I want to see what God can do. I want to see that I want to see the wealthiest people in Claiborne County walk in here Mom. and see what God can do. I want Claiborne County to meet Jesus under the tent. learn to declare openly, you will see God move. And, and what happens is, this is what the Lord spoke to me, I guess it was the day when I was praying. He said, the reason that I have you out there, now God loves tents. For a hundred years, this is his inhabitant. But he says, when you're out here, there's nothing. When you declare something, it goes forth. So when you begin to speak, the principalities of the air have to step aside. They have, come on now. When we begin to speak, the, the demons and the principalities there have to step aside because God's already. You remember the other Sunday when God let me see hundreds of angels riding in? And the Lord reminded me that day. He said, I've got the way prepared. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I'm ready. And as they begin to worship tonight and they're trying out our sound, I want you to begin to pray and seek God and declare. I want you to declare so. If you want to come up here and just anoint the altar and say, God, let this be a saving place. Let this be a healing place. Let this be a place that people will say, what an anointing, what an anointing. Can we, can we just stand as we begin to worship tonight?
song without music because I haven't done it in years but it's an old song okay so we'll just want to I feel I feel led to sing it tonight let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the glory of the Lord I'll have to do it rise right. among us and let the praises of our King rise among us let it rise yes. and let the song
Told you it was cool. That was a good breeze. Moses, and also when, when Solomon did, when, 
Solomon built the temple and Moses put up the, the, the tent of the tabernacle, the glory of God would come down. Yes, yes. And it would just fill the place. Yes. yes. And I felt the glory of God begin to settle here tonight. Yes, yes. I have felt it. I I believe that I, I, I may see things there. I believe God sanctified this spot right here mm -hmm. this time many years ago. Yes. I do believe that. Yes. I believe God chose this river bank. It's, it's a miracle that we are here. It, I'm telling you, I, I appreciate the, the, the corporation that let us come here. They're catching a little heat, so we're going to pray for them. Amen. I'm telling you, but I don't care how mad the devil gets. God's here. Amen. 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 And so, but just, I want to lift this up. I want to say something. Go right in. Want the mic microphone. During the worship, uh, I started shaking from the inside out. And I haven't felt that in a long time. Come on, Jesus. I You know, you know what that was, Joe? You remember we were going to talk and we never got to this week. God says, I've already moved. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. As we were training tonight, I saw the, the um, the, like, I, I see words. And it seemed like uh, swords. Yes. Wow. And I see as, as the word is going to be uh, declared and proclaimed and spoke these nights, that it's going to be like a two-edged sword. Come and on. it's going to pierce the very bone and marrow yes. of those coming in. Yes. And I also um, felt that mental illness yes. was going to be, Come on. Um, the demons going to be destroyed tomorrow. Come on. Beyond next weekend, if God moves, it don't matter because God will open another place. 
Championship. Amen. We're gonna, we're, this is going to be a, we're not, this is not a flash in the pan. Come on. Just getting started. This is a move of God. Yeah. Amen. 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 This is the beginning. And not only is it going to affect here, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to be hearing, hearing pastors saying, well, I don't know what's going on in my church, but something's going on. Come on. Because God didn't just send this to the House of God Worship Center. He sent it to everybody. Yeah. I mean, those, yeah. I mean, those are some good pastors that love the Lord that just need the resurrection touch yeah. of the power. Come on. Just need God to move. It ain't that they're bad people. It's just that they need touched. I've been there. And so, man, we're about to see God move. Someone else. Someone else. I know we got a little adjustment to do. We, we need to build our state. You just have to live and start somewhere. Amen. It, is this not awesome? This is God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. This is God. And, and so I would be happy if there was nothing here. I just have a mind. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm just going to give you some good advice, though. The same as too. Especially those that's got them mics that's got wires on them. If you step in that grass and you touch it to you, you're going to be like, <laughs> you will feel that spirit. <laughs> I, I knew that and we were fooling around the dust today and I got down the grass and I touched it to me on kicker. I'm just warning you because that's why we put plywood down there. Thank you. If, if you get out, if, you, if the morning gets on you and you get in the grass, hold that mic, don't, don't touch it to you. So then we'll light you up. I don't know why, but it will be the And if Doug's over laughing, <laughs> I wouldn't put it to pass stand. <laughs> That's right. I, I appreciate it. Uh, tomorrow night, if we can get some people here a little bit early, in fact, I'm taking this curtain down, and we're going to roll that one up. Yeah. We're going to open this up for people yes. to see tomorrow night. Yes. Uh, CJ five, said it's going to be here about 5.30. So 5.30. 5.15, 5.30. 530. We can get if we can get three or four guys and roll that up. Is it all right if I post Yes. From this, I'm, I'm fixing to say this. If you if you do post stuff, go ahead and begin to post it on Facebook. I don't know how to post stuff on Facebook, but maybe somebody can teach me. But I would like to get it out there. And that it's going on now. I haven't done it. Before. Here's why I haven't done this. It's for one reason, I don't do anything unless I hear from God, and I did not get God's approval. I. It, sometimes when, you, when a pastor advertises something, we get a big crowd, but we get watchers. Yeah. I want people to need God. Yeah. I want people that's, what, that's driving by and the Holy Ghost says, you need to be yeah. there. Yeah. I, you know, there was somebody in a truck out here for probably the first 15 or 20 minutes just sat there and sat there. And I kept, and I kept saying, God, let them come in, let them come in. And, and I believe the Holy Spirit was drawing them. I believe before this is over, you're going to hear a testimony. Somebody said, I was there out there on the truck listening. Yeah. You see, and, and I've seen this many times because they, they, there was somebody over here sitting and listening. And, and I, I'm just telling you, I want to draw them by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and don't that, I want people to hear this and be drawn by the Holy Spirit. And we want other churches to come. We'll welcome them. We'll do the and all this, and this ain't my, this is not going to be a show. We will oversee it. I, I promise you that. It will, be, it will be guided by the Holy Spirit, but it's going to be the Holy Spirit, not the pastor. So, uh, man, I just feel great. Uh, can you believe the rain that I believe to stop and get walk your car in the drive? Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you how God gets you ready for things. I, I, I've been watch, I watch, how you say it, Mario? Mario. No, Mario Mario. I've been watching him a lot lately. God told him to go to New York, the most liberal part of New York, put up a tent. A month before he put the tent up, he had a meeting where he called the pastors. 1,100 pastors showed up. And you know why he taught them? He said, you got to get rid of your sacred cow. But God won't move if you don't want to have And he said, he told the pastor, 1100. He said, I know some didn't like it. But he 
said you, got, you cannot be afraid to preach God's word. Well, if, if the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong. And preach it. And, but the first two nights of his revival in his tent holds about 1,500, 1,800. They had to ask me, there was 4,000 people there, so there's only a max of 2,000 in the tent. There was 2,500 people that were standing outside, and it rained for two straight days. And a lot of them didn't even have umbrellas that they stood. And if you got inside the tent, you had to be there three or four hours early. They started at 5.30 or something, and you had to be there like at 12.30 to get inside. And people would be lined up. And, and they, you know why? They were hungry. They were hungry. That God done mighty miracles to save people. And, and this is what he said. He said, I've been preaching, I guess, since uh, the 60s. And he said, I've never heard such moaning and groaning of people that was hungry to be saved. I've never heard it. He said, it was just, he said, I'd have to quit preaching so I'd come because they would just begin to moan out to God, wanting to be saved. And he said, you just had to let them come. And I want to see that hunger. God is the Holy Ghost Ross. Are we ready? Come on. Right. By faith, we're going to even bring our tub up here and get ready to baptize. There you go. Okay. Amen. Amen. Because once they get saved, they won't be baptized. We're going to have people out there talking. Okay. Two. Yeah. Amen. Anyone? 18. There you go. If 18. you enjoyed it, not give the Lord a hand. Okay. I'm going to clap you out. Uh, Especially tomorrow night and Saturday night, when the church service is over, if you'll just, if the home people just make sure there's no paper laying around, just kind of, I may try to bring the shop back up here and I'm jacking a bit up here. Just make it, keep it looking presentable. Because, and, you know, when there are a lot of people here, when they're just kind of be the last ones to leave and pick up a little bit, because if they're nice enough to let us be here, let's police the area real quick. Yeah. If you see somebody elderly, take time to walk them up yeah. there. You know, just, just you know, just be courtesy about it. And I, I know y'all know that, but I'm just reminding you because uh, sometimes we get in a hurry and we and we're not showing Christian love. Christian love is, and if the place does get packed and people, sinners are coming in, give them your seat. I'd rather them to have a seat and we just stand. We'll bring more cheers if we have to. We got, we got them ready to come. So, if nothing else, God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this much as I did and I hope you are excited as I am. And remember, declare with your mouth. Amen. Amen. God bless you.